that's power. Answer the question. No, it, I've answered. Oh, would you? Would you? Well, let's say it has pass, nothing to do with say it does really power. Great. What if it does it really can't. great? How do you know? You don't know uh, because, that. Uh, because massive socialism has never worked. I mean, Argentina tried, Japan tried it. They have higher IQs than we do. You can't borrow a trillion dollars. We don't have a trillion dollars. You know what that means, Joy? That means you either are, are in hock to China, mm -hmm. um, who, and who, there is definitely massive inflation because you start printing money. That means any dollar you have today will be worth 50 cents. But in a who few are years. we indebted to for the Iraq war, for example, where we spent a, a, a trillion okay, dollars the, also? Look, and, each, and Bush and his people brought the deficit up incredibly. So who are we in debt to for that? Um, yeah, and the deficit's very bad, and Republicans have been the ones talking about it for years. I think I, it was I Bob Dole who said, oh, Bob. Let, them, let them run on the deficit. We've been running on it for 30 years. Americans don't care. Um, each president, because of the spending of the government, each president has a bigger deficit than the last one. You know what the what entire the, what, deficit... What, 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 take a breath. The entire deficit under George Bush that you're so worried about is $400 uh, billion. This stimulus bill is mm. nearly a trillion. Well, that's not true. First of all, we both, everybody knows, and we're, I'm not a political person exactly, but Everybody knows at this point that George Bush got a great surplus when he came into office, and he squandered it. Everyone it's, knows that. It was a surplus on paper. Oh, I see. Okay. Now, um, are you frightened or gleeful that Rush Limbaugh seems to be the head of your party these days? Oh, I think it's fantastic. Really? Yeah, I'd rather have somebody. I mean, I hope. Well, actually, we do have a lot. Not that I'd rather have some, but I would like more um, Republicans running for office who can talk like Rush Limbaugh You consider can. Rush Limbaugh a Republican? I consider him an extreme right-winger. I don't consider him a Republican. An extreme right-winger with think? 20 million listeners. Well, you know, that doesn't mean anything to me. Well, That he has 20 does million when listeners? You have... That doesn't mean that 20 million li people are, are agreeing with him, you know. Uh, it means that I, they're listening. I think a lot of people are very something. masochistic and they'll listen to Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> you're saying that his 20 million listeners hate him and disagree no, with him. No, not all, but not everybody agrees with if him. If you're describing someone as extreme, I think it can't be someone who is massively popular with, with the American people. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's, that's dead down the center. Okay. All right, let me ask you something else. Now, you, the, one Do you the, listen to Rush, by the way? I, I used to work with him. I was on but the same station. But you don't listen to him. No. Well, okay. <laughs> How can you then describe him as extreme? We could interview one of the 20 million people who listen to him. But every I'm not then into somebody who filibusters like that. I like you the don't conversation. Listen to him. How do you know he filibusters? Because I worked with him for three years, and I know what he does. <laughs> Why I did used you to work with him in the early '90s. I had a radio show on WABC Radio. Okay, so from 20 years ago, you have decided you know that he is an extremist. I see him all the time. When he has I, 20 I know, million I listeners, I know his routine. I know his more rap. than anyone on TV, more than Oprah. Do you think everybody watching Oprah hates her? They're just I watching it out of Schadenfreude. Uh, Would Schaden... you ask Oprah? Okay, you know, do people hate you? Wait, uh, do people <laughs> hate you? I'd like to ask you that. No. Do you think that people hate you? <laughs> no, not when I have seven New York Times bestsellers. No, I'm. I'm very popular. But you, no, you can't have everybody love you. Not everybody loves you, Anne. People think you, you asked me if people hated me. I know, but you say <laughs> suddenly you're saying, saying no, they don't hate me. You're saying though no, because you sell, me. but you say because you sell books that makes you people that makes you think that people love you. Just no, because, because, I said that indicates to me that they do not hate me, which was the question, Joy. Okay. Anne was on the View recently. We had a good time. Take a look at this. Look, we are not attacking you. I you wrote something provocative. I read aloud like you're reading Mein Kampf, and read I just aloud. did. And I just read a section aloud. Yes, okay. and read it like you're reading Mein Kampf okay. again. <laughs> I don't think I did that. I think you did. You said out the words when I, words when I wasn't sitting here. Let me do this. Throughout John, in that case, I'd like to discuss something current. Was that Wait, yes, yes, that was lovely. You could do the, the audio book. Um, I, well, we don't know that much you about her. I mean, that that he's attacking you. I just don't appreciate sense. the way you're talking to her. I, know, I mean, nobody is attacking you. You didn't have Barbara. to talk to her. I wasn't like she here. Her. No, you're You're not that popular on the show, I don't think. <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> Sherry had to defend Barbara against you, she felt the need. Yes. Because you said that Barbara looked like she was reading Mein Kampf. Sounded like. Sounded like she was reading right. Mein Kampf when she was reading your book. Yes, do what you, a brutal attack. But do you, do you know, Barbara happens to be Jewish. Is that a little... Is that, what does that have I don't know, is that a little insensitive? In about, you know, why did you pick Mein Kampf? Uh, okay, if you can't mention Hitler or Mein Kampf, 
when anyone Jewish is interviewing you, then how about not having Jewish people interview? I'm just... What, we have a list of what can be mentioned? Just asking, <laughs> that's all. I mean, you know what, we can talk I about... I think we need a NASDAQ ticker for which words can be used at which times, by which people, when talking to whom, uh -huh. um, and it would be constantly changing and, and updated all the time. How about we just talk? Don't you think there's a good room point for sensitivity? Don't you think pain. there's room for sensitivity, you know, like that cartoon that was in the post? No, I think that is a perfect example of what I say in my book. People, people playing the victim. No, 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 no. People playing the victim when they're the victimizers. Um, you didn't play the way Barbara um, Walters read my book the first time, and she was spitting out the words like she was reading from Mein Kampf. You don't think you're a little paranoid here? I mean, she was just Well, why do you play it? it? Play it for the viewers. Let them decide. Well, they saw it already. They oh, no, I don't it. think so. Okay. I liked that part. All right, we got to take another <laughs> break. What's the biggest trouble Anne's gotten herself into? We'll ask her when we come back. Right now. Okay, let's take a call from Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, you're on the line. Hello. Hi, Joy. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask Anne, it seems like her whole focus is on what, um, you know, is wrong with President Obama's approach to, you know, finding solutions for our current situation. And I was wondering what, if she's truly honest with herself, what responsibility she feels like, you know, Republicans and the conservatives have in this whole mess that we're in. Right. They have the responsibility to the Constitution and the country, um, which they are fulfilling magnificently, I might add. Um, are, and what we have now, as I said, is this massive socialist bill that will transfer money not to individuals, not to create jobs, to state, local, um, and the federal government um, that will, by the way, repeal the welfare reform provisions from the 1996 welfare reform bill that was so successful Bill Clinton ended up claiming credit for it. Um, it has provisions to, oh, redo at the cost of billions of dollars the docks that are near Nancy Pelosi's husband's rental properties. Chuck All Schumer, right, Senator Chuck Schumer show. just Come said, on. well, okay, it's she wants long. to know if you want to defend freedom, you got to vote against this bill. But it's too long an answer. We have only a little bit of time left, and I have more things to ask you. <laughs> like, have you ever gotten into real trouble? For instance, it's interesting that you called Scott McClellan retarded in your book. You yes. said that the 9-11 widows were enjoying their husband's death. Now, those are two outrageous statements. First of all, retarded people could get very offended by that. Um, that is Comparing true. Comparing them to Scott McClellan. That is <laughs> I know true, you and I apologize, no, yes. seriously, people yeah. do not like that when you use the word retarded in that flip manner. And that the 9-11 no, widows I think he were enjoying is. their husband's death. Where did you come up with that? Um, I think it is outrageous for the media to pick on the retarded press secretary as if and treat him like he's suddenly Zarathustra. But if he was I mean, retarded, along, why did Bush hire him? I promise was you, the blind I leading the him that even when he was working for Bush. Because luckily for me, I don't have a job, and I could stay home and watch press conferences. Mm -hmm. You'd only see David Gregory getting into it with Scott McClellan. I saw the whole press conference. McClellan could turn, you know, the fact that, that Bush had eggs for breakfast into an Ehrlichman Haldeman conspiracy. Um, so he was. That's pretty clever. That doesn't terrible sound retarded for the job. to me. No, it was terrible for the job. He was another Bush loyalist. It was one of Bush's. Um, it's his Achilles heel that he kept going to Bush loyalist people he knew. They weren't very loyal to him in the case of Scott McClellan. And oh man, we've been through the Jersey Girls a million times. What's their I was problem? Talking, What's your problem with them? I don't really. I never heard this. Well, they're before. gone now, thanks to that book. So we can move but on. But why do you say <laughs> that people who lost their husbands in a horrible, horrible fire and a terrible I didn't tragedy say they like were that. enjoying the deaths? I said when they were going around cutting anti-war commercials, cutting commercials for Carrie, using their victimhood to prevent anyone to responding to them. They were loving that, being photographed for Vanity Fair. I said it, we had an argument about it, I won it, they're gone. So we can move on to so, three books later. Uh, uh, okay, Come on, didn't I insult anybody in this book? I think they're men. Well, you insult single mothers quite a bit, I Excellent. think. Excellent. I wanted to yeah. get to that topic. You, you do insult single mothers. I don't mothers. think I do. And now, I, you say practically that single mothers were responsible for everything wrong in the world. Now, I was a single and mother. Am I responsible for the financial turndown? <laughs> Am I responsible for the housing market crash? No, I think I make it very clear in that chapter. Is, was, is Bernie Madoff a single mother? Moreover, you weren't an unwed mother, were you? No, I was a married woman. Well, okay. And I was divorced in and that I was chapter, a single mother. I specifically distinguish 
um, widows and divorced mothers from single mothers. We already have words for widows and divorced mothers. They're called widows and divorced mothers. Wh why Liberals you... try to include that in the category of single mothers in order to class up the category, like referring to the GI Bill as a form of welfare. Mm -hmm. And the statistics by now, I mean, we've had 30 years of statistics. The, the evidence is in when 80% of the inmates in, in our, inst our, our prisons were raised by single mothers, Mostly unwed mothers. The children of widows don't turn out particularly badly. But there were tons badly. of people out there who were raised by single mothers who were doing quite sure, well. Sure, this is looking at it from the other end. And well, when you well, have... Well, why not look at it from that end? Well, because that's 80% of the prison population. How about 80% fewer crimes? How about the fact that, um, according to a liberal... Um, policy Institute, if you remove the factor of single motherhood, keep everything else the same, residence, um, socioeconomic status, income, the difference in black and white crimes disappears. Why don't, you blame, the, why the don't you blame community? the men who knock these women up? Because they're not celebrated. And also, what do you think about Bristol Palin? She's a single mother. I think she, she should give the child up for adoption or marry the father. I mean, I say in that, I, sell, I think the people who should be revered aren't the baby mamas. They are the people who have shotgun marriages. Apparently, not a lot of those shotgun marriages worked out because they used to have them a lot and the divorce rate was lower. So you would rather that Bristol, uh, Bristol Myers, I was going to say, what's her name? <laughs> Bristol Palin, marry the guy, even though or maybe... Or give the child up and for adoption. I think I'm very clear about adoption. that. Do you know what the ramifications of giving a child yes, I do. Adoption. I write about it in the book. It's not that easy a well, thing. Well, for the Anne. child, it's a lot better. And that's what I'm talking about. The real victims here are the children who are being bought. The worst lottery ticket you could buy your child being raised by a single mother. The best lottery ticket you could buy your child is to give the child up for adoption. It's so too just don't simple. venerate these women and We're hold them up. We're not venerating anybody. Yes, they anybody. are. Then you Agree haven't watched anything out of Hollywood. Anne. A lot of you are <laughs> talking about her on Larry's blog. And here's David Thale to tell us about it. David? La uh, listen, uh, Joy, we certainly have been talking about Anne's appearance throughout the day. We've been monitoring the comments during your conversation with her. Some of the things we're hearing, bomb thrower, very disappointed, venomous, and this, I like Anne Coulter. While you go to the blog, cnn.com slash Larry King, check out uh, the exclusive extra that we have on the blog from an upcoming guest, somebody you're going to be talking to here very shortly. That's Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar. They have 18 kids. 18. 18 children. You're going to be talking about the Octomom uh, here very shortly. And they have given us a, a, a blog extra about how to save money when you are raising kids these days. Again, that is at CNN.com slash Larry King. Look for that blog link. Jump into the conversation. We look forward for, to hearing from you. Joy. Thanks, David. They have a lot of tips, the Duggars. Thank you, Ann, for coming on. We Thank do. you. You are fine. You were great. I loved, I loved talking to you, really. When we come back, an exclusive, a new plan to pay for the octuplets and their siblings. But is it going to cost you anything? Find out when we come back.